Hi, my name's Artie and this is my photo story. So I met Artie a couple years back when he and Shelly, his wife, moved into the building that I live in and we would cross paths from time to time. Jared came across as, I felt I'd known him for my lifetime. I just warmed up to Jared real quick and yeah, I was also uh, diagnosed with a, a, a terminal disease. When somebody has cancer, is diagnosed with cancer, it reminds me of my mom because she passed away from cancer and I dealt with it in a different way than, than a lot of people. I chose to hide behind the camera. That was how I handled the emotion of basically watching her die. Uh, and when she asked me why I was taking pictures and I told her that sometimes you have to show the good with the bad or the bad in this case with the good. Uh, and, and so the more that I went out to, to lunch with Artie and got to know Artie and his family and his friends, I saw an opportunity there to, to capture images. It sounded like a really cool idea. It gave me the opportunity to get some quality photographs and some people in my life who don't know me as well. And I think this would be a good opportunity just to like meet me. And not so much this time to hide away from the pain or whatever was there, um, but more to have photos that can live on. So it's interesting how I approached Artie uh, to ask him if I could take his photos. And it's kind of a delicate thing to ask because you, you know that somebody is sick. I went to Artie and I said, look, I tell photo stories. I want to create these images for you, for your family, for your friends and I would just love to capture you. Uh, and, he, and he was all for it. No, I'm not, I don't have a job, you know, so. <laughs> I've got nothing else to do. <laughs> so on the day of the photo shoot, I drove Artie over here to the, the Fro factory to, to start doing the photos. And I sat Artie down on this stool over here uh, in front of the window, and I wanted to get these headshots. And I know that headshots can be extremely powerful. Uh, first of all, I love this. It just looks like my life right now, you know. You capture a lot of the, the sadness with it being directly. What's well, sad, you know? So close-up detailed portraits like this show the humanity. They really tell the story about a person. They really let you dive in deep into the soul of what's going on. And I think that this shot just just nails it. This is Artie. You know, there's something else about it as well, like, you know, there's like an acceptance there, and I feel like uh, there's almost a smile in my eyes, and, and regardless of what, what happens, you gotta try and smile. I know in some of the images it looks like Artie isn't smiling, because he's not, but the eyes have all the emotion. You can look deep into the eyes and, and try to get a feeling of what might be in Artie's mind. And in this case, it's, it's different than a lot of people, because Artie's, he's sick. This one's a favorite, I mean, it almost look like I could be a, play a bad guy in a movie. Sons of Anarchy, of course. <laughs> So after I did some of the headshots, I, uh, I, I had to go upstairs to grab something. And when I was walking upstairs, you know, that thought came into my mind that these images are going to be powerful. And they're going to be powerful because they may be the last photos, unfortunately, that Artie has. And, you know, I, I took a couple of seconds to, to compose myself because, you know, as the, as the photographer, you have to put on a strong front. You, you are like a mirror to what your subject is going to do. But after I composed myself to realize that I've got to be here to shoot those images and I can't get lost in what everything else is at the time, I came downstairs and, and Artie had, had moved. He moved the stool, he moved where he was sitting, and he went and sat against the brick wall. And I just loved where he was sitting. I mean, that's... that's that's Artie, just alone with the blues. 
What I really like about this image is the, the candid nature of it. Uh, Artie's just lost in playing the harmonica. He was playing a Beatles song, I think it was yesterday, which I had to stop listening to it because if I kept listening to it, I would have started to cry. And the, and the, and the picture as well. This is my left hand, which has a, a scar. You know, I was fitting and installing a carpet. You know, the knife sort of went over the carpet instead of like, under where I needed it to be, you know. You can't really notice it until you get close. That's a pretty nasty scar. Uh, and, and that was a great continuation from the portraits that I got to starting to get some awesome candids. And you could just tell that Artie was, was giving me who he really was. He was calm, he was collected, and he was giving me the real Artie. Again, this is another, another Alone with the Blues. Yeah, you because know, while you're taking that photograph, you know, I'm completely off somewhere else, you know. It just it captures me up. You got your instrument, you, you got married, you know, and you got a job and work in the field and you play the blues. I love this shot. You know, you just, you just catch me. You can see the emotions, even though the eyes aren't open. There's a, there's a lot going on, even for such a tight shot, because the eyes being closed, more than anything, is the contemplative part of it. It's just somebody being lost in the music. And that's what I gather from this. And it's kind of what I hope people take from it, is that when they see it, what is the song that's being played? Who's the person that he's married to? What are they thinking? And then when you get the rest of the story in context, it all comes together. And it's just like me and a harmonica. And I'd like to think I'm, I'm offering it up as a, a gift to people to hear, try this. What made you go with me being out of focus in there? So I already asked me, why did I take the photo of him holding out the harmonica? What I see in it when I'm shooting it and what's going through my mind is, well, the harmonica means a lot to Artie, the music part of it. You've got the hands because hands always tell a story. Uh, and the fact that Artie's there in the background, you know it's him. Uh, and then, then after hearing what Artie had to say about it, uh, it's not just me as a photographer shooting, it's the details, it's what I'm going for. But when you step back for a second, it's the, here, you take this. You continue on. When I was probably about 19, I passed uh, a music store and I saw a book in the window with, with an audio cassette and it was called like, How to Play the Blues Harmonica for the Hopelessly Musicalist. And it gave you a little C harmonica and a little play along cassette. I would practice Oh Susanna or something, you know, and, and then I would get bored with it, throw it in a cupboard for another few years. And uh, so eventually I took like some classes and I also found out that, hey, you can actually play this if you can apply yourself, you know. So this is a powerful image to me, uh, knowing the situation that Artie's in, I think I see this differently than he did. I mean, this is like the contemplative, looking at my life, looking up to the light. I think this is a dreamer boy, Artie. Dreamer of the future and the past. A bleak future that you just have to make the best of. It's one of the stronger images in the set, especially if you know the situation. It's just a vulnerable image. Looks like me after a hard night or something. <laughs> Used too much cannabis, you know. Had a couple too many gins. And then I probably grabbed a harmonica and, and thought I could play. So with this shot, I, I get the, the feeling of a, of a darker image. It comes across as, I'm tired. It's just, you know, I'm here, I'm sitting on the ground, uh, my back's against the wall, but fuck it. This is the hand that I have and, and I'm gonna do the best with what I've got. I don't know if I look happy or something else. It just says to me uh, that I love you, but I don't know if I can. My body's not working the way it should. 
So this, for me personally, is one of my favorite shots from the entire shoot. The harmonica in his hand with the light bouncing off of it, his pen, his glasses, it also looks like his, his phone, wallet, uh, his boots and the other glasses on the ground. This is that contemplative look. I mean, when you dive into this one, it's, it's like, what is he thinking about? And honestly, the back against the wall thing, through all the times that I've edited these and looked at them and printed them, I didn't really put the back against the wall together, but that's what I'm feeling about it right now. So with, with this one, he does have more of a, it's not, it's not skewing sad or upset in this one. It's, it's more calm. That's one of my favorites. This just captures me, like, throughout the last, like, 25 years, really. It's just like a little slice of history here. And over the, the years, of course, some have faded. Obviously, anybody that has this amount of tattoos on them, they mean something. So I may not know what the meaning is, but as a photographer, if I capture this, this is gonna mean something to the people that know what the tattoos are all about. Yeah, this is a slice right here. Only I think that the tattoos actually look better in the, <laughs> in the photographs, you know, just the way you handled the, the color and all that. You know, that was me. And is me. And I will say, I've honestly never seen somebody stare so intently at each image as much as Artie did. I'm still blown away by the fact that you would be interested in doing something with us and doing it with me. You know, I've never been exposed to like looking at photography that close and in that detail. In the past, when I've shown people photos, it's interesting, sometimes they just sit there and they swipe through them or they turn the pages super fast. But in this case, Artie lived with these images. He looked and studied each one of them. I think that you, you captured me in the way that perhaps I see myself. That's what I was, I was hoping for. I just wanted to see me, you know, and not be distracted. Not completely dead, you know, just. Just knowing that those images meant a lot to him uh, truly meant a lot to me. I want people to look at them and, and be happy. You know, be a, a reminder of good times and, and times, not, not just good times, just times. There are trigger things for me that bring back the memory of taking the photos of my mom and and I have those images, and every time I look at them, I mean, it, it makes you cry. It just, it absolutely does. Um, and I know that these images are going to mean the same thing for Shelly and her family and all of Artie's friends, uh, and that's part of the reason for taking them. I'd like people to see me as, you know, caring, trustworthy, someone that you could ask directions. You know, it's not stuck, stuck in a box or, you know, I want her to see me right back then and now and in the future, if that's possible. Yeah, I can see me hanging up in, in a bar or something, uh, you know, my friend's bar or something like that and, well, people drink the night away. There's a lot to tell, even although this is my story. So in the end, it's all about the photo story. These images help people know who Artie is, especially for his friends and family. But I think that people watching this who don't even know Artie are now going to feel like they've known him for a long time.